For more on this, we're now being joined by Alan Burstein. Mr. Burstein is an assistant professor and an Israel Institute fellow at Department of Political Science at the University of California. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Burstein, of course, the second batch of hostages have been released. Palestinian prisoners have been freed as well. This is the second day of the truce. Two more days to go in this four-day truce. How do you see things materializing going forward? We have, of course, seen some delays already. There has been some back and forth as well. First, we saw the delay in when the truce would start. Then we saw the delay when it came through the second batch of the hostage release. What's your take on how things will unfold going forward? I expect that the deal will actually be completed within the four days. Both sides have a vested interest in completing the deal. Hamas desperately needs the four-day truce in order to regroup and wants to show Palestinians that the attack on October 7th was worth it and they're managing to free Palestinian prisoners. In turn, Israel desperately needs the release of hostages also to show that they're actually achieving something in the war so far. So both sides have a vested interest despite all the problems and specifically that we saw today. Both sides will probably complete the deal. I'm not saying that it's going to go smoothly. Both sides deeply mistrust each other, and negotiating teams are working with Israel, Qatar, and Egypt throughout the night right now in order to try to figure out how they are going to m make sure that the following day Hamas does not again say that Israel is violating the deal or that Israel does not say that Hamas is violating the deal. So they're both trying to work on that right now because both sides really do have a vested interest in it at least the four days coming through. Right, Mr. Burstyn, of course, uh, we spoke of Qatar and Egypt as well. The hope here is that the truce can be extended before, beyond the uh, agreed on four days. Do you think that is likely to happen? So again, I think each side has an interest in that happening. Hamas sent indications today through Egypt that it has managed to, quote unquote, find 10 or 20 other hostages that fit the criteria, the criteria being either women or minors under the age of 19 that can be released. And according to the initial deal, if Hamas releases upwards of 10 hostages, Israeli hostages per day, it can by itself, so to speak, another day of truce. So they are indicating that they are interested in trying to get that to get that be the case. I'm not sure that they actually will. But again, I think both sides really have an interest in that happening. So Hamas is indicating that they might. I suspect that what may happen is on day four, Hamas may say they can make that happen, but they need another day or two in order to ensure that. So then Israel is going to be faced with a dilemma. Is it going to continue the on the fighting right now or wait another day or two. Hamas is going to try to draw out the truce as much as possible. But I do think that it is likely that both sides will try to extend the truce by at least a day or two. I'm not sure if they trust each other to make it work, but I think they will both try. Right, uh, Mr. Burstyn, of course, uh, the, we've also seen a pro against Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. What do you think? How is this going to play out back at home for Benjamin Netanyahu? So Israel's political system has been in very big turmoil for the last year before the war. Um, Netanyahu's position was a very, very right-wing government, and there were the, the biggest protests Israel's ever seen um, out in the streets. Then there was this war, and this is really damaging the image of Netanyahu because he has sold himself for the last 16 years as Israel's Mr. Security, as the one who will bring security, will bring defense. And then in come the greatest tragedy that befell Israel in 50 years under his watch and all the years that he has not actually taken out Hamas like he promised that he would. So his position is very, very precarious. Right now, though, it tends to happen in most countries when there's a war. So most people say, OK, but deal with the disputes later. Don't actually go against the government now. I think the fact that we're seeing growing protests now is showing the extent to which the population is unhappy with him. That even in a time of war, the population is saying we still need to change who is leading the government because there's no trust whatsoever that Netanyahu will not change the goals of the war, or prolong the war, or, ch or expand the goals or something like that due to his political situation. So because of that deep mistrust in Israel, the protest movement is already starting. Usually we would see it waiting to the war's end. Mm -hmm. Here we're seeing already brewing underground. All right. Well, Professor Burson, thank you so much for joining us on World DNA with your insights on this. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.